Star Wars. Going all the way back to the origins of video games, developers around the world have sought to capture the magic of Lucasfilm's original trilogy in game form. Some have succeeded, while others, well, maybe not so much. Now, after more than two years of development, DICE is back with its own take on the Star Wars universe. We sure have come a long way from this in 1993 to this in 2015. This is John from Digital Foundry and today we're going to take a look at Star Wars Battlefront on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and the PC. It's an impressive effort that manages to push each platform to new heights with some of the most beautifully realized visuals we've seen to date. It's the year of Star Wars so it should be no surprise that hype around this title has been immense, but what many reviewers have found is that the game is lacking in content and depth next to Battlefield. While it's true that the game feels somewhat bare bones, this focus design does come with some benefits. Primarily, reigning in ambitions has allowed DICE to create an incredibly polished experience from top to bottom. This starts with the game's engine. Using the latest iteration of Frostbite 3, Battlefront's real visual strength lies within its lighting and material systems. Physically based rendering is a key feature for the latest iteration of Frostbite and Battlefront takes full advantage of this feature to great effect. Lighting is natural and realistic in a way that exceeds many of its competitors. Between Battlefront and Need for Speed, it's clear that the PBR implementation in Frostbite is one of the best on the market. This is aided through the use of photogrammetry, a technique for processing still images in order to produce high resolution 3D meshes. Materials were scanned from key shooting locations used to create the original Star Wars trilogy. In addition to props found within the Lucasfilm Cultural Arts Museum, this translates into worlds and characters that exude Star Wars in a way that we've never seen before. Of course, all of this would be for nothing if the end results didn't run properly or work as expected. We've seen amazing results in games such as Assassin's Creed Unity, but in the end, performance issues kept it from reaching its full potential on console platforms. Fortunately, the development team at DICE has delivered in spades with Star Wars Battlefront. We're looking at perhaps the most polished console game DICE has produced to date. This begins with the game's elegant menu system. With its smart typeface choices, smooth transitions, and understated design, simply navigating the menu here is a real treat. This menu system is the glue which holds the package together, and such smooth navigation helps build a solid foundation for the game itself. Loading times as well are quite reasonable between matches and take advantage of classic Star Wars music to ease the transition. Between rounds, loading is even hidden behind the tallying of your score, effectively giving the impression of a game that seamlessly moves between each round. Once in game, however, there are a few key things that become immediately apparent. First and foremost, you have resolution. PlayStation 4 renders the game at 1600x900, while the Xbox One uses 1280x720. This is consistent with the previous two Frostbite titles in the system, but this time, the results are moderately improved. The post-process anti-aliasing does a better job of cleaning up edges in many cases, while the assets themselves have been designed to avoid harsh shimmering in the first place. That said, the temporal anti-aliasing solution available in the PC version is not included here, but we'll have more on that one later. On the PC, of course, DICE has been kind enough to provide its full suite of options, enabling a highly customizable image in the process. Alongside support for arbitrary resolutions, users can opt to manually adjust resolution scaling. This effectively provides built-in downsampling without the need to rely on external tools. Moving beyond image quality, how do the rest of the visuals stack up on each platform? Let's start with a comparison highlighting the differences between the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 versions. This one is going to be quick because, well, there really aren't that many differences to uncover. Resolution is really the primary differentiator here. Let's start with a few side-by-side -side comparisons. Starting here on Hoth, let's take a look at some of the details. You can see identical texture work here on the ground between the two platforms. Here as well. Both player and environment shadow quality is also identical here. 
even terrain lods pop into view at identical points. Look at the terrain along the ground here as we fly over it. We see some pop in during scene transitions as well. And how about the effects from your blaster? Once again, identical. Ambient occlusion is also consistent between the two. Look at the blob around the weapon in this shot, for instance. How about the forest mood of Endor? This section on the speeder bike reveals like-for-like -like detail across the scene. Of course, there is still some noticeable aliasing to be found in certain instances. Look at the cable in this scene, or the edge of the weapons here. The higher resolution of PS4 definitely has a positive impact. Now when we move back to the PC version, we start to see more differences crop up. In this comparison, we're pitting the PS4 version of the game against the PC version running at 1080p, with the Ultra preset. Clearly image quality is improved, but the Ultra preset defaults to FXAA producing results similar to consoles in terms of aliasing. Also, while textures in general appear very similar between the two versions, we noticed a few instances where the Ultra setting produced superior results in the PC. Shadow resolution is, of course, also improved. In fact, based on our testing, the shadows on consoles do not completely line up with any of the PC presets. Instead, it falls somewhere between low and medium. You can see another example here. Look at the shadows from the trees above. Ambient occlusion is disappointing here on the PC, however, as the same artifacts we observed on consoles remain on PC. Terrain Lod has also been pushed out on the PC using ultra settings. Mountains pop in more aggressively on PS4. The PC version also includes a nice bokeh depth of field effect used in both menus and during the game's cutscenes. Watch the background here in this scene. Note the bokeh shapes and the shallower depth of field on PC. What's odd is that in select instances, we actually see bokeh appear on consoles. Look at the background here behind the menu. Yet in other instances, we see a simple Gaussian blur instead. How curious. Okay, so how about scene level of detail? Side by side, the two versions look very similar indeed, but if we quickly toggle back and forth between PC and PS4, you can see plenty of extra details on the PC. Moving over to another area, we have a full view of the map here. You can see extra details on PC when using Ultra. Dropping to high, however, more closely matches PS4, but there are actually details on PS4 which are drawn further out than the high preset even. Look here. This is consistent with Ultra on PS4, yet when compared to high, we see a loss of detail. So in that sense, PS4 almost seems like a mix between high and ultra in terms of terrain detail. Okay, so perhaps it's time to look more closely at the settings included in the PC version of Battlefront. Let's start with a quick look at the graphics options menu. Aside from the presets, you can see that we can adjust all of the settings individually. It's also nice to have FOV adjustments in the menu here. Alright, so let's start with the scene on Endor. Cycling between various settings here, you can see that the game looks great using all four presets, but the differences are still clear. Pay attention to the foliage lods as we decrease settings, as well as foliage shadows, which are removed at the lowest setting. Also note the reduction in shadow and texture detail. Moving to another area, we can see how the shadow setting impacts visual quality here. Look at the shadows on the ground here as we cycle through the detail levels. Also, jumping between ultra and low settings for terrain and mesh quality shows the impact it has on the terrain. How do laser blasts stack up across the detail levels? Note the reduction in smoke volume on the lowest setting. When compared to consoles, you can see reduced explosions and smoke effects here as well.
Yet, in some cases, we still see effects volume on PS4 exceed the lowest setting on PC. One nice feature available on the PC is a temporal anti-aliasing solution. This greatly helps avoid shimmering artifacts at the cost of some sharpness. We love the way it looks, but it may not be for everyone, and it's a shame that it's not included on consoles. One last effect that we enjoyed that is included on consoles and the PC, however, are shadows from particle effects, as you can see here. Okay, so we're running out of time, but the takeaway here is that all three versions of the game are in great shape. Between Xbox One and PS4, only resolution really differentiates the two in terms of presentation. When coupled with slightly smoother performance though, the PS4 comes out on top. And the PC version as well optimizes well with a wide variety of options available to the player. The experience can be fully customized. What's really impressive here, though, is how well the console versions stack up against the PC version. Image quality is sacrificed, of course, but the general presentation appears to be very similar during gameplay. The extra details will be appreciated by PC gamers, but console gamers are handed a very solid product as well. Anyways, that's a wrap. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out the full article on the site as well as our YouTube channel, which is loaded with all kinds of goodies. And until next time, this is John signing off.